All right, first I need to draw your attention to something amazingly awesome. My new hat! How cool is that? It's got rivets and everything! My sister got this for me when she came down to visit. Thank you, sister. Gracias y muy macho amor. I love it when people give me hats. Hint, hint. Well, Starbucks, you've proven to me that you truly are an American company. Why am I talking to a company like it's a person? Anyway, so sometime last week, Starbucks decided to streamline its drive through menu. They took off the tall choice. In English, they took off the small 12-ounce version and only left the grande, medium, 16-ounce version, and the venti, large, 20-ounce version. I understand that here in America, we have a bigger is better complex. But we have to realize that sometimes bigger is not always better. Me personally, I like short girls. They say it was meant to streamline their menu, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows what it's really meant to do. Get people to buy more coffee, which means more profit for the company. Leading people to order larger portions of food in America really isn't anything new. Most experts agree that the recommended portion of meat for a meal is about three ounces. I know, that's crazy for me too, but they are the experts, not me. But I go to steakhouses and restaurants and see the 20 ounce porterhouses. They give me mixed feelings. The American manly side of me thinks, I would tear that thing up. While the more health conscious, wimpy side of me thinks, I do love my food, people. I love it like a fat kid loves cake. <laughs> That's such a bad joke to be using right now. I guess what I'm saying is that people need to be more conscious about what they're putting into their bodies. Not only the huge portions of meat and sides, but drinks too. Do you have a Coke every day? Do you have a massive amount of Coke every day? I know people that do, and I used to. It is absolutely delicious nectar from heaven that happens to be acid that we put into our stomachs. Don't believe me? Get a can of Coke and a nail or a screw or anything like that. Put the nail or screw in the Coke. Come back a week later. Try it for yourself. I guess my point is that I'm not bashing people that are the large or the venti or the big or the whatever. Because I know that sometimes you just gotta drink. We be thirsty! But for a company like Starbucks to take a step in the direction of the American stereotype... It's not surprising, it's just kind of sad. Because of the negative reactions that they got to it, they actually had to put the small back on the menu, which actually kind of reinstates my faith in America. So that's good. All right, really quickly, I'd like to talk about Steve Jobs. No, this time it's not about some awesome new revolutionary product that's going to be a complete game changer. Steve Jobs has a secret. He's kept his secret very well hidden. But looking back now, it's just so obvious. He only wears black. Notice the grace and finesse in which he roams across the stage during those Apple keynotes. He's always super secretive about his ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Jobs is a ninja. Now, before you just throw that out as ridiculous, consider this. While coming back from Japan, where he was probably meeting up with his other ninja buddies, airport security caught him trying to smuggle ninja stars in his carry-on luggage. Yeah, real ninja stars. They call them ninja stars for a reason. Ninjas, like Steve Jobs, are the only ones that can actually use those things. Why else would he try and carry a weapon like that in with his carry-on luggage? Unless he thought he might need to use them. Explain that to me. Huh? Huh? So just beware. There's evidence that proves that Steve Jobs is a ninja. Just so you know. We know all about you, Steve Jobs. We know. Also, I come across a bunch of stories that are just so enticing I can't resist but click and read about them, but I never talk about them, even though I really like them and I want to. But I never have time to go through all of them, so I came up with this idea for a segment. When I think about what it is, the first thing I think about is headline whoring, but I need a better name for the segment than that. In this segment, instead of talking about a story, I'm just going to list the headline. But only of stories that have headlines that are so entertaining that you don't really need a story. The title is enough. So let's see how this goes. Ready? Go! Man posing as police pulls over detective. FDA okays lasers to melt muffin tops. Hannah Montana causes epileptic seizures. That was a real headline, I promise. Woman denies pulling gun on volleyball team. One-legged man escapes police on foot. I've never loved the term on foot better than I do right now. New poll, holding a drink makes you look dumber. Cop blinds himself with pepper spray, then gets tasered by police. All right, that one I may want to read a little bit more about. Severe migraines give woman French accent. Escaped spider monkey roaming San Antonio. And those are just a few examples. I mean, do you really want to know the details of how the spider monkey escaped? Where he went, how he was caught, how long he was out, all that information? I don't. It's entertaining enough to me to read that a spider monkey is terrorizing downtown San Antonio and then just make up my own story about it. So that was my segment idea. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you found any funny headlines, send me a message or put them in the comments below too. The official question of the day is what should I call that segment I just got done with? And I'm trying to get back to the point of being able to put all the funny comments after my video. So get creative, people. I know you have it in you. Thanks for watching, Empire. Cliche YouTube phrase. Comment, rate, subscribe.